evening. If I can have your attention, please. Um, hello and welcome to the City of Glendale's community conversation regarding a possible anti-discrimination ordinance. I'm Jennifer Campbell, I'm the Assistant City Manager for the City, and we thank you for taking your time out to be here this evening. We've got a couple housekeeping facts really quick. Um, we just want to make sure that everyone has signed in. Um, at that time, you should have received um, a survey, and once you actually completed the survey, we were giving you a fact sheet that you have. Also, you should have dots. They should either be orange or green. You will get to use those towards the end of the evening, um, so make sure you have those as well. If you don't have any of those items or need anything, you can come to the registration desk, um, and you can go ahead and get those. Uh, tonight, I would like to introduce you to some city staff here that you'll be working with tonight at the community conversation. Um, first, we have Lejeune Boone. Okay, we have Chris Davis, we have Katie Douglas, we have Trevor Eversall, we have Kim Larson, we have Nancy Mangone, we have Shannon Rodriguez. They are going to help facilitate tonight, they're the note takers and they'll be working you through the questions. Also, just so you know, the gentlemen here with the cameras, they are from our Glendale 11. We've got Bill Meyer and Ed Oliver. And also representing our communications department is Joe Hengen Mueller. So thank you very much for being here, staff. Um, now I'd like to just tell you a little bit about our facilitator tonight that the city has hired to go ahead and facilitate these community conversations. Uh, it is Karen Kurtz. She is a facilitator, writer, and grants management consultant, primarily with nonprofit and government organizations. Ms. Kurtz has facilitated public dialogues, strategic planning sessions, board retreats, focus groups, and task force for more than 20 years. She worked with the City of Mesa's diversity office, and prior to her owning her own business, she worked on task force regarding homelessness, day labor, and halfway houses. She also most recently assisted the City of Mesa with their anti-discrimination community conversations. So now I would like to go ahead and turn it over to Karen Kurtz, our facilitator, and again, thank you very much for being here. I know some of you came with other people and some of you maybe just wandered in and are sitting with strangers. We're going to give you one last chance to um, kind of mix it up a little bit. So one of the things that might make this experience more interesting for you is to just hear other people's perspective on the topics that you're going to be talking about. So is there anybody that wants to move? We'll, we'll, just, we'll just have a little musical chairs right now. I'm not saying you have to move. You can stay right where you are. But now you've had a chance to see all the other folks in the room. Go ahead and take a minute and decide if you want to go to another table where there's other people sitting, of course. You can't sit by yourself. Anybody? Everybody's good where they are? OK, very good. So let me just give you a little bit of a quick talk about what we're going to do. Well, I'm going to, do, I'm going to just do a real short piece right now. And then I'm going to turn it over to Nancy Mangone, who's our uh, assistant city attorney. She's going to actually talk to you about the fact sheet that you got. So everybody, when you came in, should have gotten a bunch of paperwork. You've got it with you. The purpose for this uh, experience, this is a, the second of four public meetings that we're having. And the purpose is to gather narrative experiences of Glendale residents and business owners that will help the Glendale City Council determine the need and support for an anti-discrimination ordinance in Glendale. So that's the topic. You'll see a series of questions. We'll be going through a series of questions uh, with you. And uh, you'll get a chance to share your experiences at your table and also learn from other people's experiences. And um, hopefully it'll be, a good, it'll be a good time for everybody. So let me turn it over to Nancy right now. Everybody grab your fact sheet. Uh, it says anti-discrimination ordinance fact sheet. She's going to give everybody uh, just kind of the brief talk about what an anti-discrimination ordinance is. One of the challenges with this is we have people coming in that have a whole range of knowledge about this particular topic. So we were trying to find some way to at least put everybody on a level playing field uh, so that you have a little bit of, you, you all have the same background uh, about the topic when you're discussing it. Nancy. Thank you. I'm, I'm actually going to stand here instead of in front of the podium because you might not see me if I do that. Um, we have been working as staff on the issues um, surrounding a possible anti-discrimination ordinance since pretty much the end of October. Um, council at that time asked us to do some research and look into whether um, an anti-discrimination ordinance 
might be needed, and that's why we're having these series of public meetings, and also what an ordinance would look like if we wanted to draft one and have the council consider it. So um, if you want to look at the fact sheet, I mean, there are a couple of things that have happened since that October time frame. We've signed a unity pledge, which is um, a, a pledge that basically Glendale is open for business and will have um, the opportunity to serve everybody regardless of um, their persuasion. And <clears throat> we, we council signed the unity pe pledge just before Christmas on December 18th. Um, council at that time also asked us to change a number of internal city policies and administrative um, practices so that now we make it clear that the city as an employer won't discriminate an against anybody, um, either an, an existing employee or an applicant for employment based on their race, color, religion, sex, national origin, age, marital status, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, genetic characteristics, familial status, U.S. military veteran status, or any disability, whether that's mental or physical disability. Um, we have also, in all of the city contracts that we've written since about February, required any suppliers, contractors, or vendors that do business with the city to do the same. We put a provision in contracts that said you will not discriminate against your employees or applicants for employment. So that's how we've basically changed the way we do business in the city of Glendale. Um, we've also looked at how a number of other cities, not only in Arizona, but across the country, have dealt with issues regarding discrimination. Um, there are four cities or towns in Arizona that we know currently have anti-discrimination laws on the books. Uh, they are Phoenix, Tempe, Tucson, and Flagstaff. Mesa is considering adopting an anti-discrimination ordinance, and Scottsdale actually has been looking at this issue around the same time we have, and they've tabled or put their potential ordinance on hold. A um, Couple of things that we have uh, found in common and, and some things that are diverse in these ordinances, they all prohibit businesses located within those cities or towns from discriminating against um, the full uh, breadth of the protected classes is what we call them, uh, based on all of those characteristics I just listed. Um, they also all exempt religious organizations from coverage under the ordinance. So if you're a reli religious organization, um, if you are a private or social club, or if you are a private landlord and you're renting out a space in your house, you do not have to comply with that ordinance, you're exempt from the ordinance. Um, they also all, well, three of the four of them also all offer an exemption for small businesses. Uh, they differ on what the size of a small business is, but um, if your business has, in general, something like 15 people or less, you don't have to comply with the anti-discrimination ordinance either. Um, they cover things like um, not only employment, but they generally cover um, housing opportunities and they also cover public accommodation. One of the questions we got in this session the last time was, what is a place of public accommodation? How far could this potential ordinance cover businesses that are gonna be um, affected by it? Uh, I don't know if anyone knows what the definition of a public accommodation is, but I thought I'd mention kind of the categories of businesses that might be covered then. They're places that provide lodging. They provide uh, food, drinks, so we're talking about restaurants, we're talking about bars and saloons, um, theaters or other places that provide entertainment, um, retail establishments. Uh, retail establishments could include anything, frankly, from a retail store that sells clothing or a gasoline station. Um, there are also places of public amusement or recreation. Um, and there are places um, that may provide things like transportation services, so cabs or bus services or something like that. So those are the possible businesses that could be covered. 
sounds like a lot, but when you think about it, those are the people who are providing services to the citizens of Glendale. Um, the, the other uh, bit of research that we did was what other types of groups might be excluded from coverage in some of these ordinances. Um, they are things like the Boy Scouts, what's called expressive associations. Uh, they're generally exempt from coverage under anti-discrimination ordinances. And then the, the last set of issues we looked at is related to how we would investigate violations of a city ordinance if we had one and who would decide whether those violations have been proven. And then what to do about it, what kind of penalties might be available to um, either the city or to the person that got harmed from the violation of the ordinance. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. That's, those are the things that we've looked at. Those are the potential things we could include in the ordinance. We really don't have any specific direction from the city council on what's in the ordinance, what's out of the ordinance, or even if we're gonna adopt an ordinance in the first place. We're just trying to get some input from you all as to you know, whether you think it's, uh, an ordinance like this is needed to protect um, the types of people that are not currently covered by state and federal law. And again, the, those, um, those types of classes or types of people that are not covered are people that could possibly be discriminated against based on gender identity or expression, sexual orientation, US military status, marital status, or familial status, and there is some question about whether all disabilities, people with any type of disability are covered. Um, so uh, that's kind of the short version, the explanation of what we're trying to accomplish here as far as you know, the council's direction on, on uh, either drafting or adopting an ordinance and what it may or may not include. And you know, we'd like to hear from you folks as to what you think should or should not be in it, and what you think whether, whether you think we need or don't need one. So we have council workshops where they kind of task us to go off and do these, these research projects, if you will. And then um, if uh, we get consensus from council on moving forward with that particular project, um, we then bring our results back to them. They then decide whether they want to move forward with any specific action whether it's adopting an ordinance, enter into in, entering into an agreement, anything like that. So it, it's not just this issue, but it's all sorts of different issues. And then ultimately, if they decide to take some action, they have to do that at a you know, public meeting, a city council meeting, and, and vote on it. Okay, let me explain what we're gonna do here tonight. So you all have your table. These are the folks that you're gonna be sharing the next hour and a half with, okay? We've got a series of questions. It's the same questions that we asked to the last, at the last meeting that we had, and it's the same questions that we're going to ask at the next two meetings that we are gonna do, okay? So we have, there's gonna be four of these meetings total. They're not quite about, we're not asking you necessarily what you think should be in an ordinance or any of that. We're asking you to talk about what your experiences are in Glendale. Uh, and you know, as based on whatever identified group you have. Now you'll hear that term in your questions, identified group, and the, the protected class groups that Nancy just talked about, that's what we mean by your identified group. So whatever that group is, uh, and your facilitators will remind you of that. What, so we really want, what we're really trying to capture, capture here is people's stories. What, what is your story of your experience living in Glendale, working in Glendale, whatever, whatever it is, okay? So think about it in those terms. We've got a few ground rules that I wanna quickly cover with you and you also have a copy of these uh, at your table. The first one is, if you would, just so that we can actually hear each other, one person speaking at a time. So we really are, we wanna capture accurately what you say. Your facilitators are gonna be writing those questions down uh, but it means that we have to listen to each other. Um, we, and also please use respectful language. That, that should hopefully go without saying. Um, be as specific as possible in your comments. So um, the facilitator may ask you to clarify something that's vague or just a broad generalization. 
Again, we're trying to get to what are your stories? What are the experiences that you have living here? Be concise in your comments, because we have a limited amount of time. There's a lot of people at each table. So if somebody says something, the person before you says the same thing that you wanted to say, you don't have to repeat the whole thing over again. Just say, I agree with what he just said, and let me add these two points to it, okay, so that we know uh, then we're not repeating the same things over and over again. Um, now, key thing here, this is the easy part of our evening. There are no right or wrong answers. You're talking about your experience. How can somebody tell you that your experience is right or your experience is wrong? Okay? Um, the goal is that we want to understand this issue from many different perspectives. That's why we asked you to fill out that demographic survey when you came in so we could get a sense of the demographic diversity that we had in the room, uh, and, and we will later kind of look at that in terms of the kinds of answers that, uh, that we got from people and as we put that final report together. Uh, every perspective will be recorded. You'll notice when you came in, we asked you, are you a Glendale resident, Glendale business owner, or interested party? Um, and the council directed us to, they, they were specifically interested in the perspectives of the Glendale residents and Glendale business owners. And so those folks have a name tag without a border on it. You got green dots instead of orange dots. Um, but interested parties are more than welcome to participate here as well. And we will include everybody's comments in the final report, okay? We're just gonna no identify them as, well, these were the comments from interested parties. This was, these were the perspectives of who came from there. These were the perspectives from Glendale residents. Um, Again, speak from your own experiences and your observations. Use I language, so you're talking about you. Um, key thing, we don't need to debate, because we're not gonna come, we don't have to come to agreement. At the end of the night, we're gonna have different experiences from every different table. So we're not gonna waste time debating each other's answers. If somebody says something that you don't agree with, fine, you just tell what your experience is. You're not debating their experience. Just talk about it from your your life uh, experiences. Uh, don't argue uh, with one another's comments. You don't have to defend your own. Just simply state your point of view and move on. And most important, stay focused on the questions. The facilitators are there to help you do that, help you get to uh, some specifics in your answers, and then move you all on to the end of the night. Now, last question. There are seven questions. The seventh question, you're gonna be asked for different kinds of ideas and then you all got three dots when you came in. And so once you put up that list of ideas, then you're gonna be voting and you can use your dots to say, here's the three ideas that I think are gonna be the most important and maybe you only think one idea is important, you can use all three dots on the same idea, however you wanna do it. So hang on to your dots, because those are your votes, okay? Any qu yeah, don't try to sell them over here, no bargaining with dots. We're on to all of that. All right, any questions about the process? So at the end of all of this, we're gonna take all the information from all four sessions and combine it into one report for the city council. Uh, and we'll look for common themes that came up in the answers and then put all of that together uh, to give to the city council and then they will take it from there. Uh, you see some media folks here, we're not going to be, they're not going to be intruding on anybody's conversations, they're not recording anybody's conversations. We want to create an atmosphere here where you feel as safe as possible to be open um, about whatever it is that you have to say about this topic, okay? Uh, so, um, and then anything in your topics and your answers will be anonymous. So we won't put anything in the report that identifies, uh, you know, Joe Smith said such and such. That that's, won't happen. All right, now, are you all ready to get to work? Okay, thank you very much. We'll be wandering around to help you. Okay, has everybody finished voting? We're ready to come back together? Excellent work, everybody. First of all, I want to start by asking you to give a hand to your facilitators because I see that they did a lot of writing. which will be very good. It looks like we got a lot of good data going. So um, I wanna give you a couple reminders and then we're gonna just have a, take a few minutes because people are always curious as what was going on at those other tables that was around them. So if folks feel comfortable, we'll just go around and you can give us some of the highlights of what the conversation was at your table. You're not forced to, but this is an opportunity. Again, it's not gonna be a debate, 
We're just going to talk about what the highlights were that you guys talked about at your table. So a couple things I want to remind you of. Uh, you've got evaluations, first of all. We ask that you would fill those out. Just tell us what your experience was uh, at tonight's session. You also have at your table, and I forgot to mention them before, but if there's any comments that you, or stories that you wanted to expand on, you've got some blank comment sheets at your table. So feel free to write anything else that you want to get included and turn that in at the front so that I make sure it gets included in the final report, okay? So we want to have as many ways as possible for people to be able to express themselves in this process. And then we also have uh, an email address, uh, glendalefeedback at glendaleaz.com. It's at the front of the website, right? Right on the Glendale website. We also have a voicemail box. So phone number, 623-930-9000. Two two five five, and then the um, email address Glendale Feedback spelled out at glendaleaz.com. Okay, so there's three more opportunities that you can uh, give us comments in addition to the things that you said tonight. And then, as we said before, we have two more meetings in July. What are those dates again, Jennifer? July twenty seventh and no, not July twenty seventh. Scratch that. So. Go ahead. Uh, we have two more meetings left. Uh, one will be on Saturday, July 25th from 10 to 12 over at the Foothills Branch Library. And the next meeting is on um, July 30th. That will again be an evening meeting from 6 to 8 p.m. And that will be over at the Renaissance Glendale Hotel and Spa. So if you have friends, neighbors that didn't get to come tonight, please let them know. Now you can tell them what your experience was, good or bad and uh, invite them to come out and participate in this process. All right, we're gonna wrap it up. Thank you all very much for coming. Uh, make sure that you turn in your demographic survey at the front, your evaluation at the front, tell your friends, uh, take your fact sheet with you. You can even pass it on to people. Uh, and let's see, what, am I missing any other instructions? Somebody help me. Oh, pen, and please turn your pens back in. We need those pens for two more meetings. So thank you all very much. Drive safely, please.